Klaus Kleinfeld has stepped down as chairman and CEO of Arconic, leaving the aerospace and auto parts manufacturer after heavy pressure from activist investor Elliott Management. Joining us to discuss all this is WSJ's deals editor, Marie Baudet. Marie, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start with reading a little bit from the Arconic press release that was on the company's website Monday morning. Elliott Management's central objective, a CEO change, has been realized at our Arconic. It is Elliott Management's decision whether to continue to burden Arconic and its shareholders with its highly disruptive and distracting proxy fight or to support Arconic in facilitating an effective CEO search and a strong transition. Wow, those are pretty strong words. I mean, is that a clear indication to you that this bitter and public feud is not over? Yeah, I think it is. And I think we, we reported uh, a little bit earlier today that it looks like Elliott's going to continue the fight. Um, they're also seeking four board seats at Arconic. So while the main point of, Arcon uh, of Elliott's campaign was to oust Klaus Kleinfeld, they're still looking to uh, change the board. And uh, there's a shareholder vote May 16th, and it looks like that's probably going to go forward. Which we will closely be watching. Now, we know that, that Elliott has been campaigning for Kleinfeld's ouster, but it came a little faster than people expected because of a letter he allegedly sent to Elliott Management. Do we know anything more about this letter? We don't at the moment know too much more about the letter, but it sounds like he, yeah, he sent a letter directly to Elliott to, you know, from Klaus sent a letter directly to Elliott. Um, and the board's uh, official position is that it exhibited some, uh, some qu it showed something about his judgment. Um, mm -hmm. And we're still trying to figure out exactly what was in the letter. And, right. <laughs> but yeah. it was enough to get the board to send him packing. Of course, there's, it's mutual, they're saying. But yeah. what else? So we know that Elliott has an 11.6% stake in mm -hmm. Arconic. Is that correct? Yes. They want more board seats. Do they also want to influence who the new CEO will be? Yes. So Elliott, back when it launched its campaign, it put out the name Larry Lawson, who is the former CEO of Spirit Aerosystems, which is a big Arconic competitor. They, uh, at, at, at Spirit, Larry uh, Lawson cut costs and uh, increased orders. He's doing the kind of things, doing the kind of things there that Elliot wants to see Ar Arconic do. Right. Um, so there, it's who knows what'll actually happen, but that's Elliot's choice is Larry Lawson. And but we'll it see if could become another fight as the Arconic board has already set an interim CEO David Hess in David place. Hess, yes. What, what do we know about David Hess? So uh, David Hess was just added to the board last month. He's a longtime aerospace. Executive, he was at um, United Technologies, which is a big Arconic customer. Um, so, it, in a, in, a, it, in a sense, it's a little bit um, like pushing the board towards what Arconic or Elliot would would say it wants on the board. But it, it's not; it's definitely not any sort of concession to Elliot right. to add him to the board. All right. Now, it's interesting to think about what exactly happened because I spoke with Kleinfeld back in November, right when Arconic had split from Alcoa, and he was full of optimism for demand in the aerospace industry, which was going to be a big focus of the new company. Here's what he said. The aerospace industry has a backlog today of nine years, mm -hmm. right? So even if there were, were not one more order to come uh, at the current production rate, I mean, the factories would be filled for nine more years. But in truth of the matter, I mean, there's a lot of additional demand coming in. Every year, about 100 million more passengers are attracted to fly from Asia alone, right? The rise of the middle class urbanization, this is what drives it. And on top of it, it's accelerated by the enormous amount of innovation that comes from the new aircraft platform platforms plus the new jet engines. The new aircraft platforms on average have a 20 percent fuel efficiency. 15 percentage points of that come from the engine alone. So all of this together is a wonderful mix to make it attractive. Is there an argument to be made then that Elliot didn't give Kleinfeld enough time? I mean this was back in November and by January they are already making noise to get him out. So Elliot's argument would be that that Mr. Kleinfeld's led the company since 2008 and he's had plenty of time to improve the numbers, at, you know, to, to improve the financials since then. The stock um, was down something like 70 percent or 80 percent during his tenure, of course, a period that included the financial crisis when aluminum prices sure. dropped sharply. But it is true that right after this split, Alcoa stock soared as aluminum prices mm -hmm. went up while Arconic flatlined. It's true. And Elliot would argue that that it shows that investors aren't aren't too keen on Mr. Kleinfeld, but of course, Arconic would argue that the, the Alcoa was benefited from a, a rise in metals prices, right. as it did, and and that 
that shows the wisdom of separating the two companies because Arconic still holds a big stake in Alcoa and benefits from the rise in Alcoa stock price. Right. So. Now, speaking of stock prices, Arconic did go up 9 percent in Monday's early trading. What does that tell you about how the market is reacting to this shakeup? Well, it shows that, some, that there might be, you know, a fair amount of shareholder interest in, in a new direction at Arconic. Um, the stock is up quite a bit since Elliott launched its campaign in January. But, um, you know, this was, we were, we were thinking this was going to be a pretty close fight all along. Um, Elliott came into the campaign with a number of shareholders on its side. And as you know, Elliott has a very large stake itself. So, you know, it could, it's, it's really anyone's guess where it goes, where it goes. next and it's, month. Yeah. And it's a pretty public fight that seems poised to continue. So uh, Marie Baudet, thank you so much for that. We'll be speaking to you again soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you.